excluded or uh, never been uh, ordained, uh, haven't had the call that I know of, and I don't think I would run, uh, I, it would sound scary to me. So I'm only going to read a little scripture tonight, and we're going to pray again for Ken. And you say, well, we've already done it. Yeah, I know we have. What does the Bible say? Pray without ceasing. Amen. You can say, well, but you've already prayed for him to be healed. That's right. And I'm going to keep on praying Amen. for him to be healed. Just like we keep praying for our land. We keep praying for stuff. But what I want to go to is in Matthew, and it's Matthew 6 chapter, excuse me, verses 9 through 13. We all know this, but I just want to break down just a little bit. All of us know the Lord's Prayer. Some people say, I don't know how to pray. Well, if you don't know how to pray, just open up the Bible and do the Lord's Prayer. Because in that prayer, there is three parts that we can tackle, that we can understand. So in the, in the verses itself, and what I'm going to do, I think all of you know it, I'm not going to read the Scripture. I'm just going to go through what the Lord's Prayer is. There are three parts of the prayer. The first part is what we call a preface. Everybody knows what a preface is, don't they? If you open a book, it has this little thing that kind of tells you a little bit about it. Well, what the preface is with the prayer, it says, Our Father. We are taught to pray to God only. We may address ourselves to Him as our Father. It is an encouragement that we come to God not as unreconciled, avenging judge, but as a loving gracious Father in heaven. So when we go to him, we say, our Father. Heaven is out of sight and a world of spirits we don't understand sometimes. Therefore, we converse with God in prayer, and it must be spiritual because we can't see him, can we? <coughs> so he's a spiritual being for us. Heaven is a place of perfect purity, and we must therefore lift up pure hands must study to sanctify his name, who is the Holy One and dwells in that holy place. And that, play, that, that actually comes out of Leviticus 10 and 3. So that's the preface we have, just that, our Father. Then we have a petition. And there are six things that are in the petition. The first three relate more immediately to God and his honor. <coughs> And the last three, to our own concerns, both temporal and spiritual. Hallowed. That same word that in other places is translated sanctified, God's holiness is the greatness and glory of all of his perfection. We must begin our prayers with praising God. We should give glory to God before we expect to receive mercy. How many times do we go to him asking, 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 before we thank Him, Pastor Lord. before we honor Him for His mercy and His grace, hallowed be Thy name. We pray that the name of God be sanctified and glorified. Father, glorify Thy goodness and Thy highness, Thy majesty and Thy mercy. Thy kingdom come. Now remember we're in this First, first three parts that are relating to God. Thy kingdom come. The kingdom, our Father, who is in heaven. The kingdom of the Messiah. Let the gospel be preached to all. Let all be brought to subscribe to the record of God has given in his word concerning his son and to embrace him as their savior and sovereignty. Let the kingdom of this world be made Christ's kingdom and all become subjects to it. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Now that's where we kind of come short, don't we? It's like my will be done. No, it's thy will be done in heaven. Enable me to do what is pleasing to thee, Lord. Let thy will be done, not our own will, not the will of the flesh or of the mind, not the will of men much less Satan's will. We pray that earth may be made more like heaven by the observance of God's will. When we pray tonight for Brother Ken, 
We're asking for God's will to be done, but we're asking him, we're pleading with him to heal him. Yes. But it has to be God's will yes. and God's time. Yes. And then we're going to go into the next three parts that talks about uh, the temporal things. Give us bread. We pray for the necessary supports and comforts of our life. Give us this day our daily bread. And then we say, Lord, forgive us our debts. Are we forgiving others? Our sins are our debts. You say, but I'm a Christian. I don't have any. If you haven't sinned since you've been saved, that scares me. I try not to. But there are sins of omission that we forget. Somebody's saying something, they're using God's name in vain, and we just turn around and walk away. You say, well, I don't want somebody to shoot me. I think God will protect me if I say, please don't use God's name in front of me. Right? Our sins are our debts. Our hearts desire and prayer to our Heavenly Father every day should be that he would forgive us our debts and that the obligation to punishment may be canceled. God, forgive me my sins. Please let me live with you in glory forever. That we may not come into condemnation. Forgive us our debts as we forgive. This is not a plea of merit, but a plea of grace. How can I ask God to forgive me if I can't forgive others? Those who come to God for forgiveness of their sins against Him must, must forgive those who have offended them. So how can I ask God to forgive me if I can't forgive those that have offended me? And we offended Christ a whole lot more than anybody has ever offended me. And then we go into lead us not into temptation. And you know what? We get we face temptation every day. Every day. You can say, well, I just don't look at it. You know, sometimes I, I have you men I know have looked and said, Boy, that sure is a fine looking woman. Well, ladies don't sit back and grin. That's right. Because I guarantee you, you've looked and said, Mmm, that's a hunk. <laughs> and what does the Bible say? We thank you. We hope it in our mind and our heart. We have sinned. So, you know, I, and I, I'm getting it. It's all of us. It's all of us. Lead us not into temptation. Lord, please don't let anything come in front of me that would cause me to say or do something. You never know who's standing behind you and going to hear you. That's right. It is not as if God tempted any to sin because God does not tempt us. But Lord, do not let Satan loose upon us. Don't allow him. Chain up that roaring lion. You remember Satan went to God and said, if you take that hedge out from around Job, I guarantee you he'll curse you. I pray that God keeps a hedge around me at all times so that I don't do anything that I should not. Lord, do not leave us to ourselves, for we're weak. Even the song we learned as a child, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. And it says, I am weak and he is strong. Yeah, we are weak. Temptations are to be prayed against because of the discomfort and trouble of them and because of the dangers that we are in because of it, and we need to overcome them. Deliver us from evil. I think the only time we're ever going to be delivered from evil is when God calls us out of this earth. I'm sorry. We live as close as we can to him. So we're saying deliver us from evil, from the evil one, the tempter, or from the evil things, the sins, the evil thing which God hates but which Satan tempts men to and destroys them by. And then finally in the conclusion, the third part says, Thine is the kingdom. 
Thou hast the government of the world, the power to maintain and support that kingdom, the glory, we praise God and give him glory, not because he needs it, but because he deserves it. God doesn't need us to do it, but he deserves it from us, from every one of us. Praise is the work and happiness of heaven. All who would go to heaven hereafter must begin their heaven now. We can't wait until that death bell rings for us. Forever initiates an acknowledgement that praise is eternally due and an earnest desire to be eternally doing it with angels and saints above. Psalm 1741, Amen. So be it. It was of old the practice of people to say Amen audibly at the end of the prayer. Amen meaning so be it. So when we think of praying, now did I come up with that? No, believe it or not, I kind of, I look at my Bible for things that, that explains and helps. And you can say, well, you didn't study it and get, no, this is what somebody else wrote. But I could not have studied and searched and got it put down in the manner that it was. So when we say we can't pray, let's remember that Jesus gave us a prayer. And he said, when you pray, pray in this manner. And when we're talking about the heavenly kingdom, then we're talking about looking up to the Lord and saying, Lord, you're worthy. You are worthy. And to remember that there are so many parts, the petitions, and then, of course, the conclusion of the Lord's Prayer. So now what could we say? We can also do our own prayer and say, okay, Lord, I need to know how to start this prayer. I don't have to start it with our Father. I can say, God, please hear my plea. That's going to be my prayer face. And then I'm going to have a petition. I'm going to give him the things just like this is said. But I don't have to use this. When you talk to God, Talk to him like you're talking to your mother, your father, your husband, your wife, a friend. Just look at him and talk to him. Think of him sitting right there. Sometimes I can do that and I can actually cry because it's like, Lord, I just want to reach out and hug you. I just want to reach out and hug you because you've been so good. Wasn't very long and I know that, but I feel like that's all we need to talk about is prayer and that being because we have somebody that is sick we've had several people in our church that have been sick but when it comes to our shepherd the one that actually stood up here this morning sick and did what God wanted him to do there's no way Ken could have did the message this morning had God not undergirded him and held him up because when he left here, he was weak. He didn't have a lot to say. So we're going to have prayer one more time. And we're going to pray for Brother Ken. Um, I myself, I miss him tonight. When they called and said, Can you? I said, don't worry. The service will be taken care of. God will supply something. <coughs> We had singers to come in. Um, that helps. That helps. And then I'm like, Lord, what can we what can we do? And it's like, well, you will be praying for Ken, so why don't you talk about what prayer really is? You know what God talks to us. Not in an audible voice or praying with you, but spiritually. God can let you know what you need to do. I'm nothing. I'm, I'm just a, a sinner saved by grace. And all I want to do is to be able to fill a spot when it needs to be filled. That's all I need. And then one day I can stand before God and he'll look at me and say, well done, my good and faithful servant. That's all I want. I want nothing from nobody down here. I don't need you to tell me how good it is tonight. 
don't need that. I want God to tell me that I did what he wanted me to do. Does anybody have anything they would like to say or pray? Okay, everybody has the room number of Brother Ken? Everybody got the room number? Huh? One more time. One more time. Room number is? 372. 372 at Lexington Hospital. Um, I'll be talking with her when I leave here tonight. So if you would, I thought about an altar call. You know, they take an altar out of a lot of our churches. My brother told me about he's been going to a church sometimes uh, up in Royal Hall, and he says, sis, they don't even have an altar. I said, don't that tell you something? He said, uh, I said, how many people went down and prayed? They don't have no more for you to go pray. Don't that tell you something? How many have got saved? Well, since they, I'm like, don't that tell you something? I don't want to go to a church that I don't have an altar. That's what that altar's for. It's for praying for salvation. And in case any of you got gone this morning, before the end, end, or actually service was over and everybody, a young boy got saved. This morning, Amen. Amen. Uh, who who knows his name or his name's Dominic. Dominic, God, he came up and said he wanted to get saved, and Ken talked with him and led him to the Lord. Amen. So let's remember, there could be someone in our midst that is hurting. Someone that's not saved. Someone that has turned away from God. So we're going to have prayer. And I'm going to ask all of you if you would come up to the front. I know that's hard on us. As we get older, I'm almost 73. And I tell you guys what. I have a hard time. Tom, it's going to be up to you if you want to walk up here. Or you can stay right there, honey. He's having a real hard time. Keep him in your prayers as well. And what I want you to do. We're going to pray for Ken again. I want you to take hands, join hands. We're going to pray for Ken again, but also, if you're here and you've got a hurt or you've got a need or you've got somebody else that you need to pray for, I want you to pray for them. If you feel like you kind of slid, ask God to help you. You don't have to come up here and tell me. You need to tell God. Because I can't be accepted. All I can do is pray for you. I'm going to sit down here and come to my phone. And we're going to pray. Now I want you to pray tonight like you mean it. Not like I'm going to say a short prayer and run out that door. Pray to God. Pray what's on your mind, what's in your heart. Honey, can you pull up just a little bit more? Yeah, I'm so good. You okay, you're good. Y'all, please keep my husband in your heart. Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we come to you again, dear God, tonight. Asking God that there's so many in our church that are sealed. So many needs in our church tonight, dear God. So many that are lonely, God. So many that have financial needs. But God, right now, we're going to stand in the gap for the kids and ask you to send him back to us, God, that he can stand in this pulpit and proclaim, yes, God does heal. Yes, I'm here because of prayer. And Lord, we don't care whose prayer makes it. But help us, Lord, all of us, to have that faith. To know that what we're asking for tonight, God, is going to be answered. And that we leave it in your hands, God. Now, Lord, we ask that you be with each one that's here tonight, with each home that's represented. Lord, help us to ever let our light shine. Help us, Lord, to ever stand in the gap for anybody and anything that's in our church that needs to be done. God, you know what our needs are and you know what we need to do. And we ask now, God, that you touch each family, each person that has sickness in the home. 
Each one that has a mate, God, that's been sick. Each one that has children, God. Each one that has a family member that's lost, God. And I pray tonight, God, for my brother. Please, Lord. I want to see him saved. Be with you tonight. And if it took me, God, to wake him up, I know I'm ready. God, help us to ever be for you to have us to be. We'll give you all the glory and all the honor for thou art worthy. And it's in the name of Jesus that we ask. And everybody can say, Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I guess I have to keep up Tim Ken's statement. <laughs> we want to thank Doris for what she's done for us tonight. You know, at the spur of the moment, we can always come together. No matter what, the Lord's always with us. Amen. So just continue to pray for Ken. And I hope to see each and every one of you Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Amen. Now you can be this man. <laughs> 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 <laughs>